Today on Real Life, lives changed through adoption. Pastor Jen and A.J. Howard share their powerful story of adopting four kids. Plus, does everyone go to heaven? The pastors dive into a question about universal salvation. And on Real Life Coaching, the benefits of omega-3. Dr. Paulette Sedlak explains how the fatty acid can benefit everyone. That's today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, He empowers you. And the Bible is your and my guide, Pastor, to abundant life. When you abundant said life. pastor, I'm looking. I'm looking at the pastor side. So it's like it's, it's screaming daddy in, at the mall. Uh, <laughs> my, my, my name's Don Black. I'm your host. I'm here with my with my beautiful wife Terry and the pastor. Pastor Amy Schaefer and Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert. Uh, it's uh, it's abundant life, and we talk about that in every program. Mm -hmm. Jesus making life full. Isn't that so good to know that no matter how bad our life is or what we're experiencing and going mm -hmm. through, that life is always better with Christ. I heard one man say it like this, that my worst day is always my best day if Jesus is in it. Wow. Oh, wow. Good. That is such a my great attitude. Or what about if life is going pretty good? But there's a whole nother level of joy That's and right. peace Amen. and living in Christ. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, uh, I, w I just saw her leave the studio, so I'm gonna we're gonna have a special we're gonna have a special little su surprise. So somebody get Linda ready, okay. get her out here, mm -hmm. uh -oh. because we have a special announcement for you, family. I want you to do an introduction and an announcement. But today's program is is really on the theme of adoption and love. Mm -hmm. You know what what's it take to bring a, a child into your world? I mean, what's that? Your life. It takes, it takes your life. It takes everything, everything doesn't it? Everything you've got. Well, yep. What, 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 how do we find a parallel in that with what God's done with us? Mm. You know, adopting us yeah. into his family. Well, I think for me, once I had children, I really saw um, how selfless I had to become. I didn't realize how selfish I was oh, yeah. until I started having children. So I think you see how much in our imperfection, how in God's perfect love, how much he gave up. Yeah. So then he could adopt us and bring us in as his own. Well, thank God for his love and his adoption. And I see Linda saying, Linda, come up here. Terry's lipstick because it needs to be darkened just a little bit. <laughs> so if you'll come up here, this is Linda, Linda Webster, who is our, our lead. Come on over here. Sit over here. Sit over here next to her. <laughs> no, I, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I wanted you guys to meet her because she's the, our lead. She's, she does, she, her face isn't done. <laughs> well, the reason our faces are done <laughs> is because of her. But today's your birthday. Yay! Yay! Happy birthday, Linda. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Linda. We love you. Happy birthday to you. Well, you know, we just want to recognize you and all that you do on this program every day. Yeah, we are, yeah, we are on TV. Your face is totally not done. I'm like mortified. You guys don't know. You look beautiful. We just, we just celebrate you. Thank yeah. you so much. Well, just go ahead and fix, fix her lips while we're oh, doing this. Okay. So, so oh what she does. Awesome. this is what Linda does every morning. She in, in the evenings and all the time. She's our lead and a tremendous wow. makeup artist, one of the oh, best in the wow, city. Wow, so wow. we're thankful for her. God brought her, and she loves Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So back on the topic of the spirit of adoption. Yes. You know, when God brings us, He ad He adopts us into His family. Is is that a fair analogy? Oh yeah. I mean, we, we He chose us. <laughs> Think about that. Like he, he sent his only son so that we could be a part of his family. He died for us. He gives us everything that we need for life, for godliness. He, he equips us. He, he, he takes care of us. If something's wrong with me, it hurts him. Like think about that. Like he, he's longing to take care of me and he adopted me in. I didn't deserve it. But he said, I love you and I choose you. You know, I've always, I love being a mom. 
You know, that's something I have forever. And my heart, I just, it just is sad to know that there's so many children that are orphans. I know. They don't know what it's like to have a mom or a dad, right. you know? Yeah. That's just, so I'm just so thankful for that opportunity that we have to adopt children yeah. that we are adopted. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. the, the beautiful mm -hmm. thing is when you adopt, you're adopted into God's family, he never, he never lets you go. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. He never lets you go. You know, my mom was adopted. She went into foster care during, uh, right, right after the Great Depression. And she got handed from house to house, foster care house to foster care house. Where she was really more of a servant child than she was a, mm -hmm. a loved a love addition to the family. And wow. they'd push her around to places. God doesn't do that with mm -hmm. us. He holds on to us. He puts us into his family. He gives us all the privileges and the rights of being his child not only on this earth, but on the, in the life that's to come f throughout eternity. So that's the miracle of being born again. That's the mm -hmm. simple truth of the gospel. He, God loves you so much that he wants to bring you into his family and give you full rights. Amen. If you've never accepted Jesus, you've never invited him to come in and, and, and be, that, be that in you, join his family. Call us at 888-665-4483. And let's, let us pray with you about making that transition. It's no big deal, it's real simple. Real easy, it just takes a heart-to-heart -heart connection. Mm. Amy, what, what's coming up next? We're so honored, really, to have pastors in the house today for hard questions. One thing we know for sure is that God loves people and wishes that no man perish, but that all come to the knowledge of Christ. They're answering a tough question today about universal salvation. Is everybody just automatically going to heaven? Let's hear what the pastors have to say. Welcome to Hard Questions. Our pastors are here. They're taking on questions that you sent in. They're right out of the headlines in many cases, but we always find the answers right out of the Bible. That's where the hard question answers really all apply. Pastors, hope you're all well. Amen. Yes, sir. Ready Amen. for a round? We are. Let's go. Sandy called to ask, is there such a thing as universal salvation? Yeah, well, uh, you know, I think that uh, to define what universal salvation is, it means that everybody will be saved. Now, uh, I'm, I'm gonna let the other brothers uh, talk about the scriptures, but <laughs> let, 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 let me just say, you know, where I think it has arisen from. Uh, you know, some people have a fear uh, of going to hell yeah. and other people feel that how can a loving God, you know, who created human beings, how could God let a person go to hell? And so I think that uh, universal salvation has been birthed out of that mm -hmm. to explain, you know, the fact that people will not suffer eternity in hell or a loving God will not let anybody go to hell. All right, so let's look at a couple of things here. Number one, let's get something straight. God's intention is not that anybody goes. It was right. never his intention right. in creation for that to happen, but he mm -hmm. created us with free will. He created us with opportunity mm -hmm. to choose him. And when we don't choose him because he is holy, that holiness requires that there be a separation of anything that chooses not to be. You know, one of the verses that universalism will often choose to use, there's a couple of them. One is in 1 uh, Timothy 3, 3 to 4, but also 2 Peter 3, 9. And it's this idea that it is God's desire, God's wish that none should perish. Right. That word, that word, a wish there is a word that means intended. It's also a word that means affection. God does not have affection for anybody to perish. But Jesus said uh, there in, in, in John 14, 6, I am the way, the <coughs> truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father but through me. Yeah. And then we go into the Old Testament, God says, I have no delight in the death of the wicked. So in other yeah. words, if there's no de delight in the death of the wicked, there are wicked. Ezekiel and, 33. Right. And, yeah. the, and, and that wicked one and again, as you both said, it's not the idea that, that God programmed them or designed them to be lost eternally. It's the fact that they chose not to serve the Lord. It's, just, mm. you know, it's sad and, and it should break our hearts as believers to those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. So it brings us back to our knees believing for the lost. Well, another passage of scripture that they take is 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says, mm -hmm. for in Christ, for an Adam all die, but in Christ all will be oh, made alive. Okay. So a lot of people take that as a way to have universal salvation. And it goes back, yeah. whether we realize it or not, we're all right back 
where Adam was in the garden. Mm -hmm. You know, they, there's two trees in the garden. There's a tree of the knowledge of good yes, and evil and there's a yes. the tree of life. Right. And both that's of them good. have a belief statement yeah. with them. That's good. And that's why the Bible says we're saved by okay. grace, yeah, unmerited yeah. favor, but mm -hmm. through what? Faith. faith. So ultimately it's a choice of what we believe, whether we go to heaven or hell, it's not that God sends anybody there, right. but it's ultimately a choice of what we believe and the choice that we make, and just we, like Adam had in the garden. Right. And where we partake from. That's right. The tree yeah. of life. And, you know, and, and Jesus is the tree of life. And I'm not going to argue with what you said, but I do want to say, I do want to kind of uh, add something to it because I mean, I've said that many times, you know, God doesn't send anybody, but at the same time he does based on a choice, sure. based sure. on a choice, uh, because you don't get there on your own. You get there because it is a consequence That's of right. choice. So yes, you will be sent based on your concept, but who is the author of that? God is because of his holiness. He has to protect his holiness. So he will invite. We don't get invited on our own. We get invited, come, you know, well, good, well done, you know, good and faithful servant, come into thy rest, right? So you also get sent, but it's not based on his lack of affection. It's based on his protection of his holiness and your choice of your own sin. You know, we're talking about adoption today. It, it, is it a fair analogy to say, and maybe it's a simplistic one, doctor, but that those in the family go to heaven and those that are not in the family have to go to punishment? Right. Well, I mean, it's simplistic. Right, right. Uh, yeah, for, uh, John 1, 12 says, but as many yes. as received him, Ooh, to them gave he the power to become the children of God. See, okay, so, so the adoption process mm -hmm. is simply us going to God by faith mm -hmm. and accepting Jesus as our Savior. Right. That's it, right? Right. That's how we get saved. That's how we get in the family. Mm -hmm. Right. So if the family is protected and secured eternally, and those outside the family, I know that sounds a little odd, but those outside the family have to deal with their own consequences. Right. Right? Exactly. Then, then what holds us back from joining the family? I think there's a lack of revelation mm. of sin. You know, you think about how could God send the world to hell? How could God allow that to happen? Yeah. We're missing the revelation of our sinful nature and the purpose of Jesus Christ coming to die. And that's where we really see his love is when we really see how gross we are in sin and that he died for us, paid the price, and then is willing to adopt us. Well, in Romans 5, 8 says that God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. That's, right. mm -hmm. that's when Christ, Christ didn't die when we were all dressed in a white robe that's singing right. in the choir. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he died for us when we were down in the gutter. And that's, mm -hmm. when, that's when the love of God was extended. And we know too, you know, John 3, 16, it's a verse that is, you know, that is great it just says, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, uh, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. That, it's that word believe. And that word believe is a word that doesn't just mean to say, oh, I think so, or I agree, or I can see that. It's this idea, like this chair, I put the weight of who I am and my confidence of my entire being into that which holds me. And if we don't do that, listen, I think we're going to be a little surprised about some of the people we don't see in heaven and some of the people that we do see in heaven, because we can't be so judgmental. We just have to look at the fact that, okay, put the whole of yourself in the weight of the hands that hold the world. That's good. You know, if I, you know, just kind of back up something that Jay said, you know, if, if I was God, you know, I, I wouldn't let anybody go to hell. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just to think somebody being tormented and tortured forever and ever and ever, I, I would, you know, I just wouldn't want that to happen. So I would, I would let, I would believe in universalism. I would let everybody come, <laughs> but I'm not God and God has provided a way. Amen. And that way is through Jesus Christ. that's good because I probably sent a yeah. whole bunch of them to hell. You know, so it's probably good that I thought, you know, God either, you know, because I said, y'all go on. <laughs> you, 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 deserve, you, you deserve to go on down there. <laughs> well, we, we know this much for sure that God has allowed us to be in this family through the blood of Jesus. And we do have to repent of our sins. We've got to turn from our ways and, right. and become that man in God he's created us, man or woman that God's created us to be. It's a very simple process for me. You know, I like to make things real simple. Join the family. When you join the family, everything else is good. That's right. You know you're in. And then as you get into the family, you grow and you take your responsibility, assume the duties that God has given to you. Thank you, Pastor. So good, good answers on a question that has deceived a lot of people, you yeah. know. Yeah. Don't be yeah. deceived. Don't be deceived. What a man sows, he will also reap. Send yes. your hard questions to ctvn.org or call us right now on the number on the screen and tell us what your question is. We'd love to get your questions because we love to bring those answers to you. Coming up next, a young couple's amazing story of adoption demonstrating, here's what we're talking about, the father's heart.
the Father's heart and how he changes lives in the way only he can do it. We'll be right back. Now more than ever, it's important to stay connected. Here at Cornerstone, we want you to be in the loop. Call now for Real Life Today, the free newsletter that will keep you up to date on all of our programs and specials. It has encouraging articles and behind the scenes stories. Plus our brand new Christian Patriot Briefing. It's filled with ways that we can pray for our nation and take action. Real Life Today, the little newsletter that packs a giant punch. Jason Howard is a pastor with Amplified Church here in the Pittsburgh area. They actually have churches in different parts, outside even outside of Pittsburgh. His home life has been wonderfully changed. And I'll let him tell this story by the adoption of their four children. Jason, welcome back. Hey, yeah. thanks so, so much. So glad that you're here you. with us. Yeah, thanks. So, so, so here's, the, here's the deal. I mean, you and your wife, you're kind of going along, enjoying ministry, enjoying life. You know, don't have the kid thing and then all of a sudden what 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 stirred your heart I mean that's kind of interesting you know I, I probably would never advise people to do this but when AJ and I got married we never really thought like specifically what are we going to do about kids you know right. are we going to have our own or anything and so a few years into being married AJ says we should probably at least you know think about what our plan is you know right. <laughs> so and we were loving life I mean you know we were um doing ministry loving people mm -hmm. having a great time enjoying being married mm -hmm. you know and um, so, so I guess I guess this is probably a little bit unique to us, but we never really had a, either one of us a very specific like, man, we've got to have our own kids. Okay. You know, we weren't even sure if we were going to have kids at all. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a little bit a little bit unique. And so um, we just started thinking, praying about like, well, what's what's the story and, and what's going to happen here? And AJ got a hold. My wife AJ got a hold of some information about kids who need homes. Okay. And her heart just started to absolutely break. And she said, there are so many children in need. Yeah, here in the States, but also all around the world. Um, kids who don't have loving homes, kids who don't have parents, kids who, because of their lack of love and support, their long-term prospects for life are... Um, Pretty yeah. yeah. Not, mm -hmm. not what you'd want. Mm -hmm. Not what God would want for his kids. That's right. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so we started asking questions and, and, and looking into the situation and the plight of millions of children who don't have homes. And our hearts started to break for them. And, you know, obviously, like, we know the way that Jesus has loved us and that before we had proved ourselves to him or, you know, we didn't belong in his family, mm -hmm. right? We were at odds with him. We, right. we had walked away from him, but yet he came and got us. That's yeah. right. He came and rescued That's us, right. and he came and, That's right. he came and did for us what we could never do for ourselves. And right. so, you know, when, that, when, when you know that love personally, I think that that love just starts to sort of take over. And so when we started hearing about people in need and children in need, it's like we've got to do something. Mm. Okay. I, I was a little bit more hesitant than AJ, okay. you know. Um, she, she started looking at this. She said, all right, we're just going to adopt them all, you know? <laughs> and, and I thought, uh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> well, did you start off thinking, okay, we're going to adopt four children? Or did no, it start no, one at, at a all. time? And Well, I think that we had come to the conclusion. So the more we started looking into it, we came to the conclusion that, you know, let's pursue adoption. This will be the way that we'll have a family, okay? okay. And we thought, well, instead of just doing one child and then coming back and adopting another child, maybe there's an opportunity for us to do a couple kids at a time or something like that. So you like were that. thinking of older children and not necessarily babies. Well, now that, that was not necessarily the initial plan. Okay. But when we started figuring out what was really going on on the scene, it, it's funny because you've got two waiting lists. Like I think people who've heard about international adoption have heard about um, waiting lists, like you're waiting for years right. for your child and that kind of thing. And that is true if you want a healthy baby. But if you're willing to adopt a child who isn't a healthy baby, there are millions of children who need homes today. Oh. Wow. And so when we started looking into that, we thought, well, 
we're not doing this because we want a baby. We're doing this because we want to help some children. Mm -hmm. And we started realizing that sibling groups were almost never adopted right. um, or very rarely adopted. Okay. And older children were very, very rarely adopted. People don't want to take older kids into their home for lots of reasons. And so we thought, well, if, if this is something that God wants us to do, we'll do an older sibling group. Wow. And so we started, we started pursuing that. And that's how we ended up with our, two, our first two children, Katya and Danielle who we brought home from Lithuania, and they were nine and 12 when they came home, and they're biological siblings. Okay, so. mm -hmm. and you were young though. Yeah. When you, were, when you yeah. adopted. We actually had to ask the Lithuanian courts to waive their age requirements, really? which they were very willing to do because they knew that it was very unlikely that another couple would come up mm. for children this, in this state of what, life. What was it like when you first brought them home? It was really hard. Um, they didn't speak any English, and we, don't, we didn't speak Russian, so. Um, but they had been through a lot of tragedy in their lives. Mm -hmm. And they had, um, you know, were living in an orphanage because of some really terrible tragedy. And um, as a result of that, they, they had behavioral problems. And, and you know, our, our adoption agency, I don't, I don't want to disparage them. They're phenomenal children, but life had been bad to them. Yeah, right. That's right. And, and that affects how you see life, that mm -hmm. affects how you see people, that mm -hmm. affects everything. And um, so here we are, this young couple coming from halfway around the world, they don't know who we are. You know, their only perception of America is Disneyland and Coca-Cola, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, uh, so that's true. We, we brought them home and um, it was very difficult. And, and it's, I think it's easy to understand sort of the language barrier, but that was maybe the easiest part. Okay. The harder part was, um, teaching them how to be healthy people right. and that was very challenging. Wow. So. Who's it harder on you or your wife? Um, I think in different cases you know it's mm -hmm. different either way. I think that they understood mom because they had had a really great mom who passed away. Oh. They had a harder time understanding dad yeah. and so but then it was maybe different with our the next child that we adopted. Maybe it's the other way around. I was going to ask you about oh, yeah. that. So, so, so yeah. you have two, yeah. and then you send in siblings. Wait, there's yeah. a family. Oh, we got a picture. Right Let's see. Oh, yeah, we do have some pictures. Yeah, so that's right. Oh, so this yeah. is everybody. <laughs> um, and I think you can scroll through to now, some other pictures. Now, how old are your oldest children? Now? Seventeen and fourteen now. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, and that's maybe from a few months. Let's that's go. like five years in. Yeah, that's my wife AJ. She's she couldn't be here today because our littlest one is sick. So, so unfortunately, yeah. That. but she, that's her preaching at church at Amplify. Keep, and yeah. this is my 14 year old boy oh. backstage getting ready for church. Oh man. So he was nine when he came home. Oh, and these are our two babies. This is your second, second. Your third. Yeah, so, so London with the black hair there is our third child. Uh -huh. Now, AJ thought, you know, after we had adopted Katya and Danielle and they had been home and, the, and lots of adjustment, lots right. of difficulty sort of working through all of that. Um, but we had gotten to a place where there was peace in our home. Yeah. And by the grace of God and we saw firsthand how redemptive love can transform human beings. Amen. We saw it, yeah, awesome. we were changed in the process for mm -hmm. sure. But we watched how Katya and Danielle were literally brought back to life. And they, they're not even necessarily, in a lot of ways, the same kids that they were because right. a safe, loving, secure home changed them. Have another you know? picture. And where okay, this so this is little London. Uh -huh. So she, so a couple years later, we thought, well, let's have another go. And mm -hmm. so London came home when she was two years old. She's from China. Mm -hmm. And London has some physical special needs, mm -hmm. not, not mental special needs, but she's got some mm -hmm. um, physical problems that have okay. been a challenge that we didn't really know the full extent of that before the adoption. Okay. Yeah. And Another, they, they oh, didn't really oh. let you know. Is that what you um, said? Or they didn't know? We don't know. Okay, yeah. sure. I guess it doesn't really matter <laughs> yeah, exactly, that, that, exactly. you, that she has physical challenges. It wouldn't challenges. have changed anything either. No, right. Have. That's no, right. That's no. right. So as a, as a dad now, I guess it's been many years now, but you went from a, kind of a, not a, a, a married couple to being a pretty large family. Yeah in a very mm -hmm. fast pace, not yeah. only a large family, but a large family with teenagers. Well, yeah. and, and you have a, you have a, your youngest now is one, right? That's that right. you just yep. recently are in the process in of adopting. In the process of adopting, yeah. yeah. So that was a surprise because we thought we were done after three. But then there was a couple in our church who knew about a child who was unable to stay at home mm -hmm. and needed a place to go. And so, so they reached out to us and they said, do you want a baby? And we're like, why are you calling us? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no, they called us and um, me and AJ were like, okay, this is totally not planned. But uh, we just prayed about it and we thought, yeah, we've got to bring him home. So you have baby to teenagers. Yeah, we, so he just turned one and Katya's 17. So the whole God. way. Wow. wow. Wow, that's a big deal. And you're deal. young. Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> sometimes I feel younger than. Yeah, sometimes yeah, I feel yeah, older. Sometimes we all feel wow. young. Yeah. <laughs> well, brother, it's, it speaks to you and your wife's heart and compassion mm -hmm. for people, and that really is admirable mm -hmm. that you would open up your heart and life and home to pe to young people that don't have any hope. Well, I don't know if I can take much credit for that because didn't Jesus do that for us? He did do and, it for And us. if we know how to love, it's only because we've received what Jesus did for us. And That's right. I mean, how good is his love that he would come and rescue us when we didn't have a family and a home? Well, you know, that's what I wanted to do with you. Uh, yeah, yeah. There are people watching yeah. that haven't found that connection with, with Jesus, haven't sure. been adopted yet. Yeah. They, they haven't yeah. put their families together. Yeah. How would you speak to that person? You should get a camera here. Yeah, and absolutely. Share that with them. Oh my goodness. The thing is, is that, that the love and the grace of Jesus is the best thing on earth. I mean, it is the best thing. Jesus, we're all at odds with God. We know that because of our disconnection from God. I think we all naturally feel that. But the amazing story about Jesus is that he came to rescue us. And while we were still sinners, he came and pursued us. And he made it so simple. I mean, he gave us grace and it is entirely free to us. All we've got to do is reach out and receive it. It cost him everything now. Mm -hmm. It cost us nothing but faith. That's right. Thank you for coming and sharing. Next time we'll bring the whole family. Bring the whole family. Yeah, we will. Next time we'll just sure. have a big old family thing. We'll have pizza. We'd love and to have <laughs> them on there. It'll be, yeah. it'll, it'll be, Thanks, it'll be fun. Thank you. And we pray your little one gets better. Yes, in Jesus' name. Thank you. In Jesus' name. You. In Jesus name. Mm -hmm. you know, that's really the heart of the Lord. The heart of the gospel is that he gave his love for us so that we could be in his family and live with him forever. That's really simply what the gospel's about. And what's this, that's how we started with Adam and Eve. He had that connection point. He wants to come back to that connection point with us, us, you and me. So don't miss that. Come, come to the Lord. Get in his family. If you're in his family, grow in it. Grow in your relationship with him because he's got big things for you, big plans for you. Your greatest days are ahead of you. I promise you that in Jesus' name. Let's go see what Sydney's found in the news. As the flu outbreak continues to sweep across the country, some churches are taking precautions. The Catholic Diocese of Buffalo has suspended sharing wine at Holy Communion and shaking hands during Mass. The guidelines went into effect after the New York State Department announced flu cases in the state spiked more than 50%. And we have an encouraging update for you on a national day of prayer declared by President Trump for a little girl. Sophia Campa Peters asked the world to pray for her before she went into surgery at Boston Children's Hospital. She suffers from a rare genetic disorder that causes the narrowing of her blood vessels. Her plea caught the attention of the president and press secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders issued a statement about Sophia's condition. And we're happy to report that Sophia's surgery went well. She's now out of the ICU and is staying in a regular hospital room. Well, that's all for God in the headlines. Have a great day on purpose. See that spirit of adoption. Mm -hmm. yes. Spirit of adoption, that, that loving God who puts his arms around us and lets mm -hmm. us share love with each other. Right. You know, I think there needs to be a fresh revelation of the love of God, mm -hmm. a balanced one. Mm -hmm. Not like the world is telling it where God loves you. It doesn't matter what you do, you're accepted. But the love of God that he paid the price for our sins mm -hmm. to bring us in, that if we're willing to let go of our old life and receive him, we can have eternal life and then experience true love. Right. Experience mm -hmm. true love. Yeah. Terry, that's the deal right there. Mm -hmm. Because we chase in our culture, we chase after all of these imitations of love. Right. That's all right. this false stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. We go after the flesh, we go after right. the, the mind, we go after all these loves that are artificial. Yep. But Pastor Amy, God's love is pure and true. Amen. And Nothing can separate us right. from the love of God, nor height, nor death, nor, nor the deepest, darkest sin or things that you're hiding. Amen. Absolutely nothing can separate us from God's love. Amen, 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 amen. This is a transition, but I'm going to make it if you're suffering in your body. We're talking now back into our body with pain. You don't want to miss this next coaching session that's coming up right now. God's funny how he moves in my life and sometimes, and I know he moves in everybody's lives a little bit different. You know, I've had this happen just the other day. I'm driving to go to a movie. The movie's all crowded, parking lot's all full, it's cold, you know, it's been so cold here. And I drove around this hedge and just right there, right on the right hand side, first parking spot was empty. And I said, I, I literally said this to God, I said, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. You had that spot for me reserved for me in here, because of your kindness and your love 
and I thank you for it. That's the little thing, but you know what? The little things really add up to big things. Welcome to Real Life Coaching. Our goal is to help you become the very best you possible. And then as the best you, to win in life God's way. Dr. Paulette Sedlak shares the miracle of being healed and how God used omega-3s to change her life forever. Let's get started with Real Life Coaching. It's such a, a, a great benefit for me to personally learn about omega-3s and all the values of, you know, we've been working together on it. I didn't quite get all the details of it, so thank you for helping me understand. Oh, One thing I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were in that place that you were at the bottom of the desperation yes. road mm -hmm. and you said, God, kill me, heal me, or show me the way, yes. how did omega-3 play into your recovery? Well, it was, it was a huge part um, of the recovery. And before I, before I tell you about that, I just want to really um, help to impart hope to people. Because if you're even close to that situation in your life and you're suffering, you're in pain, or you have a disease process, process or anything, you know, remember what Jeremiah 29, 11 says, God says, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you and therefore your welfare and not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome. Mm -hmm. And I really learned to trust in God every step of the way. And God became my source of confidence, like it tells us in Psalm 71, 5. He's the true one we lean on. And it was, it was really revealed to me. I went to a brain clinic and had nuclear brain studies. And they, at the time, they said that my brain was the worst case of Alzheimer's they had ever seen for anyone my Alzheimer's. age. Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, yes. And they weren't even, you know, so concerned about, you know, the things I was telling them. And so they were talking about omega-3s, which I had al already been taking. Uh -huh. But um, I actually needed to take what people would consider mega doses. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's interesting because... You know, when people need uh, a lot of medication, say in the case of cancer, chemotherapy, and radiation, those are drastic, drastic measures to take on your body mm -hmm. and very, very toxic mm -hmm. chemicals in the body. So, it, but it's accepted. It's accepted by the medical profession. It's accepted by society. But if you tell someone they need to take a lot of something that can heal them naturally, you know, kind of sometimes eyebrows come up and they'll say, wow, you know, I can't believe you're taking that much omega-3s. But now studies are coming out that show that omega-3s can heal brain damage. And in my case, eventually, Eventually, I was diagnosed with encephalitis. Mm. And so when I finally found a, a doctor for another review of my situation, um, I told him, I said, I felt like I was dying. And he said, well, you were, you were dying. And he said, you had encephalitis. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how do you know that? And he said he had only seen this, this happen in one other case um, from, from anesthesia and it, where your antibodies actually atta attack your brain. So any type of brain deterioration can benefit from omega-3s and certainly in, in higher doses than the recommended daily amount. So, you know, dosage-wise, just, you know, a regular dose uh, for people, you know, uh, we're recommending to take two a day. And you can take them, you know, two at a time. You can take one and one and one. You can take two for breakfast like you do. Mm -hmm. um, it's if you have problems with inflammation, you know, people can take more. They can take three or four a day. And you're not overdosing. You're still well within the guidelines of nutritional guidelines. So it's, it's just going to help take down the inflammation naturally. Even if you're taking uh, other over-the-counter anti-inflammatories or pain medicine. And the beauty of this is that as you start to feel better, 
then if you're on prescription, you know, your doctor, you go yeah. to the, your doctor mm -hmm. and the doctor will say, hey, we're going to cut you down. Or maybe you don't need this anymore. Mm. You know, your pain's diminishing. How fabulous is that, that you don't need a toxic uh, mm. prescription or mm -hmm. takes, taking something every day over the counter? Wow, now that would be, a, that would be in many cases, a miracle. Yes, absolutely. And in my case, it really was a miracle because there was no hope in the medical um, professionals that I saw, every type of specialists uh, for brain and neurologists and neurosurgeons and PCPs, and the list just went on and on, you know, nuclear brain scans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most people don't get nuclear brain scans. And so I really searched and it really came down to what really restored my memory because I really, I had to relearn how to spell words, how to write checks, how to put dishes away. Wow. Um, you know, when you get to the point where you're driving and you don't understand the red light means to stop, that's pretty bad mm -hmm. brain function. Mm -hmm. And so it really, the omega-3s is what really restored my memory over time. So when we were exploring how we were going to launch our nutrition line through mm -hmm. Real Life Nutrition, yes. um, you said, Let's do omega threes. Yes, right so, away. So now you know. Now I'm going. I get yes, it now. Yes. Dr. Paulette yes. knows about omega three. Yes. Now you know about a lot. That's not all you know about. Right. <laughs> but but that's why you chose this as being our launching uh, yes. product. Yes, because for me, I feel like you know God took me through the pathway to get to that point where I was taking the omega-3s that really restored my, my health and my life, really, mm -hmm. um, to the point now where to me it's, it's, it's priceless because, you know, now I can memorize scripture and, you know, there's only two things that are eternal and that's the human soul and the word of God. Mm -hmm. So f for me, I don't want to lose my memory no. and I would think most people don't want to lose their memory. Mm -hmm. So this is a way to support brain function. Your brain must have the DHA as the essential fatty acid for brain function, for your cognitive abilities and for memory. And the right kind of DHA. Yes. The right purity of DHA. Oh, you must have you must have this pure product because most products on the market, and I mean pretty much probably most in North America, uh, really do, they, it is not processed the way the Ultra DHA is processed. So it, you're not going to have the absorbability. It's not going to get into your bloodstream. And if it can't absorb, first of all, in your intestines, it's not going to go into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And if it's not in your bloodstream, it's not going to help your cells mm -hmm. as the anti-inflammatory and actually feed your cells to make them healthy cells. And that's where the cycle starts. Yes. Healthy cells making healthy cells. Health, healthy cells make healthy organs. Mm -hmm. Healthy organs make healthy systems. And healthy systems make a healthy you. You know, when, I, when, when we were talking about creating this, I knew about omega-3s mm -hmm. and omega-3s and 6s. I put them in the same category. Mm -hmm. You know, omega-3s and 6s. Mm -hmm. I don't really say those together, but they're right. totally different. Totally different. And they don't, they, don't, they don't even, they're not even synergistic to each other necessarily. Yes. So when you said omega-3s, mm -hmm. I had to kind of, okay, okay, you know, she's the doctor, so okay. So I started to take it, and, you know, we, we started with a, a trial period with some of our staff members and because we wanted to see how it worked before we bring it to our family and say, hey, family, here's something that's good. Yes. Didn't want to tell you it's good until we tried it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I started to take it uh, with uh, two, two, two pills a day. And that's what the daily uh, recommended dosage is. And I take it in the mornings. Mm -hmm. And you need to take it with fat, I think, Dr. Mm -hmm. Paulette. It helps to absorb it. Helps it to absorb it. Yes. So I, 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 I did that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I was, you know, not skeptical. I, you know, I, I, with hope, you know, with hope that this would be something that would be beneficial. But I, by nature, am a little bit, uh, I don't want to say skeptical, but I'm a, I'm a little Thomas-y. You know what I mean? You know, Thomas is the, I believe when I see it kind of guy. Uh, Thomas, everybody puts Thomas in the bad light, by the way. <laughs> Thomas had, he died for the gospel. He, he doubted Thomas, but he, he stood for his faith. So in that regard, he needed to see it. And so in many ways, I, I need to see it too. So I started taking it and I was, didn't know what to expect. And then I have an old basketball injury that I, my right knee, that I had hurt back, not just as a young man, but you know, I played basketball all the way into my 40s and I'd hurt my knee in, in a basketball incident. And it, I had to have surgery on it, and, and it was a chronic kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It was 
always back and forth, up and down, and it would hit you at the funniest times, you know, when you didn't expect it. Most of the time going down steps <laughs> instead of coming up steps. And uh, I just noticed after two weeks, two, mm -hmm. just a little over two weeks, I just noticed that my right knee didn't hurt. And I went, That's wow, my, my right knee's not really hurting. That's great. And I just kept walking on it and feeling like it wasn't. And that is... And, and, and I've got some things in my lower back that mm -hmm. have been knots and stuff. Yes. And, it, um, and it doesn't, it's not gone away. My knee's, my knee's good. It's like the old knee, but my yes. lower back is better. Yes. So those are just in the last two months yes. where I've sensed these and I feel these yes. replications for me. And I was, mm -hmm. So I can wholeheartedly say to you with, 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 a, with, a, with total honesty, mm -hmm. I'm taking it every day, and I'm going to continue to take it every day because it works for me. Mm -hmm. Now, we can't guarantee that it's going to work for everybody. No. Because we don't know what that means even. We don't know what that means. But, you know, I, I think it's great you're sharing, you know, your story because um, something that I think would be a fun thing for everyone to do before they start taking it is to write down every little ache and pain <laughs> that you can think of in your body yeah. and then start taking it and then see, you know, over time if those things are how they're being affected. And the reason why I say to do that is because over the years with seeing patients, so many times people come in and they'll say, oh, by the way, my knee feels better. And I'll say, why well, didn't know your knee was hurting? <laughs> or, you know, I don't have headaches anymore. Well, I didn't know you had headaches. And they're like, oh, I didn't tell you about that because I'm just used to That's having it. that. That's it, right I'm there. I'm used to it. I've That's had this right. for years, like you said, an old That's basketball right. injury. Yeah. And so it's been there so long. Mm -hmm. And then one day, one day you just realize, oh, my knee doesn't yeah. have that anymore. Yeah. And so people really get used to feeling a certain way, and they think that's normal. Yeah. But it's not normal. Well, we don't. We don't know what is going to be, like for instance in heaven, we don't know what heaven's going to be like. We don't know what, how our glorified body's going to be. We don't know what, that's, there's, we have theories and talk about what it's going to be like, but we don't know because we haven't gotten there yet. But we do know that John says, in Third John says, beloved, I would above all things. This is John the beloved. He talking, that Jesus, Jesus is one of his intimates, said that you would prosper and be in good health. Mm -hmm. So we know it's God's will, brothers yes. and sisters, to be in good health. Yes. And then he goes on and says, even as your soul prospers. Yes. Well, what's your soul? Your soul is, is your mind your, and your body and your personality, yes. the way you see yourself, yes. the way you are, who you think you are. Yes. That needs to prosper. Mm -hmm. You need to prosper on the soul level. Then you will prosper on every other level. As man thinketh, so is he, the Bible mm -hmm. says. And so we are, that's the whole reason why we do uh, the Real Life Nutrition line. Yes. Is, and we've only got one product in our line, so we don't have any. So far. So far, <laughs> not a deep line. But, yes, but yes. so that we can offer people real answers yes. for yes. real life yes. to help them with, in this case, let's go through the list. Inflammation causes Hit me with the big list. What, well, what first sort of, of all, if you're in pain, you have inflammation. So if you have back pain, neck pain, headaches, joint pain, muscle pain, old injury pain, mm -hmm. like in your knee, you definitely have inflammation. You know, people suffer with migraine headaches for years. You know, that's it, that's inflammation. So if you have heart disease, if you're having memory failure, maybe, you know, you've been diagnosed with a little bit of dementia or Alzheimer's or something like mm -hmm. that. Cancer, mm -hmm. cancer starts with inflammation. Mm -hmm heart disease, heart blockages. And you know, Dawn, God is so intimately interested in us. He loves us that's and right. he loves us mind, body, and soul. Right. And so that's why I love that scripture because you know, ultimately the spiritual things last forever. The body is only here temporarily, but that body is God's gift to us. That's right. And he knows our essence. He knows every cell in our bodies. He knitted us in our mother's wombs. And so it's for us to take care of. And so it is a good and right thing to take care of the temple where the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Well, it is a good right thing. Thank it's you so right much. Thing. You know, and I, I just want to tell you again, this is our real life nutrition line, which consists of one product right now. And we're going to come back with some others. Uh, but for your gift to this ministry, and when you put a gift in the ministry, you're putting a gift into the kingdom of $49.95. We're going to send you a month's supply of this wonderful supplement that we've been talking about, Real Life Nutrition Ultra DHA. And we're going to send it to you, and not just that, brothers and sisters, we're going to give you a two-month supply. 
because I want you to take it every day. Actually, every day of your life, I think you'll be taking it. I, and uh, you'll, you'll love it so much that you're going to want to continue to take it. I, that's what I do. So you have too much supply for the $49.95. And, and, and in addition to that, Dr. Paulette's book, which is Kill Me, Heal Me, or Show Me the Way, her testimony of God's divine revelation and his rescuing her from a pit of despair. It's going to encourage your spirit. It's going to help you. It's going to help you to say, if he's done it for her, look what he's going to do for me. God's not a respecter of person. So we're going to give you both models and you're going to get that uh, wonderful testimony book and plus a DVD, an hour plus of Dr. Paulette talking about this product in detail. Talk about ultra DHA and omega-3s and why it's important and what, what's the value. So all of these together for your gift of one of, one, of a, it's over $150 retail value if you were going to buy it in retail. You can't get much of this in retail for $49.95 to this ministry, your gift to the ministry. So go on to the website that you see on the screen or call us on the number on the screen and you're going to be blessed. Dr. Platt, so thank you for being our partner. Thank you. Thank you it's for being a blessing. blessing to me and to all of our family. And, and you know what? Here's a story of how a life was touched and how God showed them a way. So I grew up in what society would call a normal family. Uh, my mom and my dad, brother, sister, upper middle class, very involved in my life, played sports, went to church, did the you know, bi-weekly Bible school sort of thing. So when I was in middle school, that's, that was like the era where I was really trying to find out who I was and where I fit in. It was easier for me to drift with those who were partying and sleeping around, using drugs and alcohol, because they didn't care, you know, what background you came from, what you looked like, who you were dating. So I kind of went through the motions, went through high school, kind of just floated my way through there, went to Penn State University for a year. And it was during that year where my life just took a total turn for the worse. It's like when I got to college, I was more attracted to the partying aspect more than I was, you know, really like pounding out the academics, like really doing what most college students do when they go to school. That's to get an education and make something of their lives. I ended up dropping out. When I went home, I had this insane painkiller addiction and I didn't have the means to support that habit. And that's when heroin started creeping its way into society and it was more uh, prevalent, it was cheaper, readily available. It was really natural that, you know, heroin kind of found its way into my life. So I had done six months in jail and I had come home and I mean, not even three days later, I'm using heroin again. I, I broke my family apart, you know, I, and I can see that now, like how, my, you know, it damaged my parents' relationship. It was just total mayhem. Like, I totally dismantled the meaning of family. So I, I violated probation, wound up back in prison. I'm on the phone with my mom, and she's like, well, what are you gonna do, Ryan? Like, you've gotta stop. I went into Teen Challenge. You know, obviously, I wasn't a Christian, so I didn't have a Christian worldview. Everything that I was living by was being countered by the gospel. So it forced me to really look at myself and ask like, well, Ryan, what do you believe? Like, what is motivating you to live life? Because right now, you're living for drugs. You're living for failure after reading the gospel and, you know, with other books and teaching series. And I just got on my knees one night in the chapel and was like, God, please, like, if you're out there, I really need you to reveal yourself to me. I need you to change me because I don't like who I am. I don't like what the old me is or what me at the time is doing to everyone around me. It's like the Holy Spirit just penetrated my heart and it's like I've never been the same. You know, my family's top priority. It's just great seeing the restoration that God's doing and has done because our relationship's like never been better. You know, I embrace that testimony that God gave me. And uh, so I'm psyched to be working here at the Father's Heart Ministries. Now I'm living for something that has meaning, that has value, and that God has me in a position where I'm helping other men um, find their purpose and their calling in life. It's like, where's there a better place to be? 
honestly. I love this testimony of God's changing lives. Amen. You know, and that story, his, his journey, how the Lord just brought him into that place. And uh, he does do that with you and me too, because God's not a respecter of persons. Amen. What he's done for me, he'll do for you. He'll do for you. God loves us all, brother. We're talking about unconditional love. Right. Unconditional love. Has it got any, no limits, no limits to God's love. Right. I love the scripture. I think it's in Psalms where he says, he pulls me up even if I've made my bed in hell. Yeah. He's there to rescue me, Amen. save me, pull me up, set my feet upon a rock. That is the love of God and the goodness of God. Mm. He's not up there like waiting. How can I get her? How can I take her out? Yeah, right. I want to make sure she has a, just a terrible day today. No way. He's saying, how can I bless my kids? Mm. How can I show them favor and mercy today? Well, I think as a mom and a dad, that's what you, you're not going to wake up every morning and just say, hey, I'm going to, I want your day to be miserable. You know, right, what can no. I do to make your day the worst day ever? Right. You want well, your children to have the best day ever The too. best life ever. Mm -hmm. That's what real life coaching is all about, that we could be the best you and then live your life the way God has created you and pre-established pre your life. The older I get, the more I know that God's already got it taken care of. You know, there's a peace that comes into knowing that you can trust God. Mm -hmm. Now, there are things we need to do. We need to, be, we need to be responsible. We need to be able to do what we understand. And know to do good and not do it, it's sin, the Bible says. Okay. So that's why real life nutrition is in, is in part of our family because we want to line up. Now, here's, pastors, here's what I'm thinking. We line up in our spirit world by learning and studying the Word and hearing, hearing the Word and, right. and walking in the Spirit. We line up in our, in our, in our soul world by renewing our mind yeah. and getting our minds right. And getting, then our relationships get right and then everything else gets right. And every, we line up in our body, which we're triune. We talk about that a lot. We line up in our body by eating right and supplementing our diets, that which we can't get through our food, mm -hmm. and, and doing the right thing with our bodies. Now, is that, does that fit for you guys? Oh, without a doubt. You know, I was thinking as you were talking how as man is a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body, and how we've got all sorts of teaching on spirit. We've got all sorts of teaching on the mind. We're starting to see a resurgence of the body. And I think what we've done, we've removed the responsibility away from us and put it all on the scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, all i got to do is just quote a scripture, name it and claim it, blab it and grab it, and God will just <laughs> heal my body. But God's saying, there's omega-3s out there. Right. You know, there's good nutrition. Keep sugar out of your body. He's trying to show us. And I believe that's one of the major areas that the devil wants to attack in these last days, too. And that's why God is giving us this revelation so we can finish strong. And, and, and our eyes are open to it. I'll let you come yeah. right. Our eyes are open to it. We heard about the, the, the keto zone. We're moving into the keto zone. We're seeing phenomenal response. Amen. That's right. And if Amen. you're in that world with us, keep on going. Come on. You know, it's not right. easy, but keep on going. The results are right before yeah. you. And Terry and I and Jay and Amy, we can testify to the results of good oh decisions God. in our body. Now, that's what omega-3 is all about. Now, you, you heard Dr. Sedlak as she talked about the power of good omega-3, how it's critically important for all these things. If, mm -hmm. So if you're in pain, if you hurt in your body, that's just enough to go from there. But there's so other many other things, mm -hmm. you know, prevention of some chronic right. life threatening diseases right. because of our supplementation. What were you going to say? I forgot. Well, I, we, well, something that you mentioned beforehand was just to reiterate that you cannot make this in your body, no. this omega-3. That is something that, and you cannot eat enough fish every day to make that in your body, right? I mean, no, I think right. a lot of times people are out there and like, ah, I'll just eat it. Because that's, sometimes that's a thought. We don't need vitamins. I'll just eat it in my food. Or I'll just get a couple more fish sandwiches at, yeah. as, at, at through the drive-thru. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With all the breading. I'll take yeah, it yeah. fish, dish, not, and chips. not going to work. Right, deep fried. Deep fried that omega-3. <laughs> it has fish in it. So I just want to make sure that we understand, you know, that there's an understanding well, let, that you let, can't let get Let me present that. this to you again so you can see. Omega-3 is something that you need to take the rest of your life. I'm going to take it the rest of my life. So to introduce you to it as part of the, our family in the Real Life Nutrition brand, we've selected the world's best. Dr. Paulette went out and found the world's best with a, the, a replicable company that does this and does it in, in a way no one else does. They have patented right. process on making it pure, making it the best it can be. Two bottles. So this is one month supply. This is 
second must supply. You take two a day, you take it with fat, if possible, that's your best way to do it. take it with fat. And that means eating it with something that has fat involved with it, it absorbs better. And then, and then w with that, you'll also receive this DVD that Dr. Paulette talks about, the details of omega-3. You get to relive all the things that we're hearing and learning so that you can see that in your own life and start applying it in your own life. Plus her testimony book, Kill Me, Heal Me, or Show Me the Way, powerful testimony of a doctor who was at the bottom of an unknown disease and was, was dying mm -hmm. and couldn't find an answer and God showed her. See, God showed her the answer. So, and this is a big part of the answer is omega-3 is a big part of the answer. So if you're, you're suffering from, let's just say from the pain for right now, if you've got pain in your bodies, this is something that I want to encourage you to take. And there's also a, a wonderful booklet that talks all about the value of omega-3. So call the number that's on the screen and get that supply in your, in your life. And, and you know what Paul that said to do, and I'm going to remind you, Make a list right now before you start taking it. Many people have called and ordered it, so th I'm glad you're doing it. That's wise. That's very wise because you're taking steps based upon wisdom. That's right. That's so yeah, important. That's right. So important. And so write down all the pains, aches and pains that you have before you start taking it, and then keep this little pain journal, and then watch and see how things start going <laughs> away. Is that cool? Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It starts going away and you don't hurt the, that way. There's a God way to do things in your body and in your health. And I think we're in a culture, even if you sit down and watch a TV show, you're going to see advertisement for drugs continually oh, yeah. uh, for men. Oh. And so sometimes we just think that's the only option. But it's not the only option. There's a whole natural right. way for the body to heal itself through vitamins and minerals. And so this is just one way to see some great results in your body. Can they ever work together? Can you take prescriptions and oh, also sure. this, yes. and that'll sure. help Absolutely. all together? Sure. Ne never stop taking the drug, the prescription drugs until the doctor tells right. you to do it. Right. That's just not smart to do that. Right. But this doesn't conflict with any right. medication. So there's nothing that you have to worry, will that hurt this or will that hurt this? This is a natural thing thing. It's a natural thing. I'm going to read some things. Inflammation. What's inflammation mm -hmm. cause? Migraine headaches yeah. could be attached to that. Heart disease, uh, Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, pain and suffering in our bodies. That's enough. I don't have to have any more on yeah. the list. Right, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Much less what else it does. So I want you to call us now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if uh, if you don't like it, you tried both bottles. You said that after two months, it didn't. I didn't feel a, a thing. We'll return it, your money to you. Wow. Simple. Wow. That that is because, as I said, we're not in the business of selling vitamins. We're in the business of sharing truth. Amen. This is the truth we've discovered. I want you to know that truth too. Thank you for watching. So glad that you're attached to us. So glad you're part of this family. We close every program with prayer. Let's stretch our faith out. Pastor Jay, would you would you close us in prayer? Sure. Father, thank you today for your anointing. Thank you for your healing virtue. Thank you for this wisdom and knowledge that's been brought to us. Thank you for every viewer, Father. And we thank that no matter what the need is, you are El Shaddai, the God of more than enough, Father. More than enough healing, more than enough. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.